Hello everybody, this is Travis Blaze and welcome to another Sketch to Animate. Yes, we're doing Draw Over Mondays on a Tuesday. Oh, let's see, let's see who we have in the house today. We've got Roman, we've got Brush Mechanic, Life Fantasy X. We've got Joer FMD saying hello, hello to all you guys so far. Um, I might be doing it solo today because I can't seem to get a hold of uh, Wink. Uh, we were delaying it because I, well, I'll be honest, I was in flight. Um, I had to risk uh, flying on the airline to see my brother, Aaron, who you guys might know and, and kind of like. Uh, Aaron and I were spending uh, the holiday weekend together. So he flew out here to see me and I went down there. I did my masks and everything. I did my best to socially distance from everyone. And then <clears throat> when we got there, I came back on the flight. And so we're quarantining ourselves for the next two weeks at home. Uh, so, uh, we can be precaution, you know, just take precautions and hope for the best. So, um, today, uh, I think we're going to be doing some drawovers. I, I have a few drawovers to do. I've got, uh, I, I believe, a few people had sent me things. I'm just going to go over here and double check and make sure that I, I have everything that I need. Um, I had looked earlier today. Uh, wait, I've got my friend Dave Zabowski who's trying to give me a call here. Uh... Hold on guys, while I'm doing, I'm gonna be live here just for a second. I just gotta take this call real quick. Hold on one second. Hello Dave. Hello Travis. I am, I am currently live. <laughs> we had to switch our, we, no, 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 we had to switch our, our days. I'm saying hi to everybody. You can say hi. This is my good friend Dave, everybody. Hey everybody. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, can I call you back in, a, in an hour or so? Okay, great, awesome. I'll talk to you then. All right, wait, wait, wait can I, where can I watch you? Can I watch you? Oh, yeah, we're, we're guys, we're, we're all on Twitch Live right now. So if you want to watch me, I'm just doing some drawovers for some people, and uh, we've got about 10 people in the house so far. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're on Twitch Restream. Uh, you know, all right, I'll come, I'll come check you out. Thanks uh, for taking my call. And, um, <laughs> all right, talk to you later. Bye. All right. Now, for those who don't know Dave, uh, which you probably wouldn't know, Dave Zabowski was also a former animator at Disney, and him and I are working together on a company called Lytro. It's a new startup company. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the, the chat room right now. Um, and we are actually, dot com, there we go. I want to, uh, oh, no, that's wrong. Sorry, guys, that's not right. It's, it, it's misspelled dot, Oh, what are you doing? It's trying to, it's trying to make me, it's trying to mis, repronounce what I'm trying to say here. Okay, do not change that. Oh my goodness. Lie, tro, dot, c, o, m, return. There you go. I believe that's it. That is it. So if you go into my, uh, if you go into that last thing I did, disregard the, the first one, if go to Lytra at the bottom, Lytra.com. That's uh, a new startup company that we're really excited about. And uh, we're looking for artists. We're looking for really good artists that want to join our team uh, to do uh, illustration work and uh, that type of work. So just check it out. And if you're interested, for those of you that, um, you know, we're, we, are, we are putting a call out for other artists, Lytra artists, and uh, we're looking for people, you know, at a pretty high caliber, um, but it's all portfolio based. And if, uh, you know, if, you're, if you have an interest and you want to submit, uh, or if you know any other artists out there that are, you know, uh, pretty decent artists that have been working in the industry for a bit, um, we're looking for, for all different age. I mean, it doesn't matter even if you're, you're new straight out of college and you are, uh, you've got a pretty solid portfolio, illustration portfolio. We're looking for artists like that, uh, that think out of the box that are story driven. And, 
uh, are interested in work. So with that being said, uh, yeah, that Dave, Dave was just, uh, give me a shout out. Um, and it's, it's a great company. It's an awesome company. I can't, I can't say enough about it, but, um, I am also one of their artists for that, that thing. Um, to, Oh, that's what I forgot to tell you guys today. Um, I, I started on a new, uh, project. I just got hired full time with Warner Brothers feature animation and, I am working with a whole new crew. Um, you know, I was working on a, a Super Pets for a couple of months, and then be between that I was working at Netflix on a feature film, but I'm really excited to be working with this crew of people. Um, amazing producer, amazing director, great great team overall. Um, I'm getting in the early, early stages of this production, so and I can't really talk about it too much, but I can tell you that it's really exciting, and it's... Um, it's going to be, it's all storyboarding. Uh, the stuff that I'm going to be doing is all storyboard driven. And it's, it's definitely up my alley in terms of the type of genre of storytelling I like and the films that I like. So that's cool. So I get to do that again. So yay, Travis is employed. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways. Um, so where are we at? Okay. Back to where we were. Okay. So we got that out of the way. Uh, for those of you that are new that are, are not new, I'm just gonna reify again. We here at Sketch to Animate Draw Over Mondays on Tuesday today, we are in the works of doing uh, draw overs. And if you don't know what a draw over is, basically I'll give it to you like this. Whenever I, I learned when I was an intern at Disney, the process of drawovers, that was the way I learned how to draw better. I would have someone who was a senior animator or cleanup artist or layout artist, they would sit and they would do drawings over, over my work. Essentially back then it was traditional, so if I drew something on paper, I'd show it to them and then they'd take another piece of paper and they would draw and say, hey, I like this, but hey, maybe draw it more like this. And that was sort of that drawover process where you learn on the job as it happens and you learned it from someone who is skilled and has experience in that area. And for us, we are doing draw overs for people for character designing, for storyboarding, and for character animation. So if you're interested in all of those things and you want to submit, um, our Discord has a place where you can see where you want, you, uh, Discord has a link. If you go to, if you're part of our Discord, you can always send a link over there. And also we have our website uh, when you go over to our website and you go to sketch to animate dot, dot com, I'll just throw it in there again. Uh, you go to sketch to animate dot com and then um, I'll just put that in there and then you go to go to our uh, go, oh, sorry. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, something just happened. My Discord just went away for some reason and then came back again. Uh, nothing happened. That was really weird. Uh, my Discord just went away. Uh, we'll try it one more time. I, I just lost you guys. So everyone say hello real quick. Um, my Discord on my chat room literally just went... I'm sorry, not the Discord, but my, uh, my chat room as I was typing in Discord and where to find to submit... Uh, for your draw over Mondays, they just it just kind of went away there. So I don't know what's going on. Anywho, um, we're still streaming. That's good. Well, shoot. Give me a shout out, guys. Let me know if, if you still hear us. Okay. Yeah did did uh did I skip anything? Did it, did you guys lose anything at all? Um, I'm. I, was I gone and then came back again? Or what was that? Or have I been on the entire time? Because I feel like there might be a glitch in the matrix or something, because this happened to us the last time. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, it was something weird with the chat room. Okay, so I'm gonna type this in again. Sketch to animate. Let me do that. Sketch to animate.com and then go to draw over Mondays. There we go. That should work. 
if you go to If you go to Draw Over Mondays, Sketch Animate, go to Draw Over Mondays, that will give you, uh, it should give you the link, and I'll just double check that. Uh, you go to our website, and, yep, and at the top you'll see Draw Over Mondays, go there, and it gives you directions on how to submit to our live, uh, for our live stream for Draw Over Mondays. So, all right, awesome, good. So we got Kitchen Cat, hey Kitchen Cat, hey Brush Mechanic, Let Fantasy. Uh, Life Fantasy, hope all's going over there with you with work and animation. Uh, let me know how's everything going. Um, I am planning, I was planning on doing uh, a coffee and draw. For those of you who are part of the subs, I'm going to do a coffee and draw sometime tomorrow. Because um, uh, today, uh, I was going to do it this morning. However, I got busy. I got launched for this first sequence uh, of the film that I'm going to be working on. So that's good. Uh, all right, let's see here. I did get some draw overs, so I just want to double check the drive and see what was shared with me. Okay. Nicholas, Iris. Let's see, I want to make sure that I'm looking at the stuff that. All right, I'm just double checking. Okay, got it. So it looks like I got something from Iris, and that's Azularis, Azularis. And I also, if Azularis, if you're around, I know it's, it's uh, I don't know if it's too late for you or not, but if you're around, I'm gonna do Azularis today. And then it looks like I got something from, uh, let's see here, Dakota earlier today. And let's, Double check that. I did, I got something from Dakota. And if there's anyone else out there that submitted, let me know. Uh, oh yeah, uh, this is uh, Bianca from Discord, gotcha. Uh, yeah, HD, I was thinking, I was thinking um, I would try to do it later in the afternoon since uh, HD is, is always been there, uh, is in Australia. So I'm trying to find a, a sweet spot that it's not too early for him and it's not too late for everybody else. So I was thinking if I did it around noonish, maybe that might be a ha good halfway point for everybody else if I did a, a coffee and draw tomorrow around that time. Um, so with that being said, I got Dakota. If there's anybody else that put a draw over thing for me, let me know in the chat room, uh, since it's me is kind of winging it solo, uh, so I can see uh, who uh, might have sent me something. Okay, so it's 23.14 p.m. Oh, wow, okay. It's a little late for you. That is very, very late, so thank you for staying up. So we're gonna do Azulis first, and then I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, download Dakota stuff real quick. Uh, let's see here. Where we go. We got Draw Over Monday stuff. So let me download that one real quick. And that one. Will it let me draw? Will it let me download it? I hope so. All right, let me get to, I'm just trying to get to this guys. Uh, okay. All right. Why are you not letting me download? That's what I don't understand here. It's not letting me download that. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and download Iris Zula's first. Downloading that. All right, here we go. All right, looks like I've got that downloaded. I'm going to switch this over, guys, to the Cintiq. And here we go. Boom. Uh, got it. All right, we've got that switched over. It looks like we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and open up 
the first draw over for everybody here. So, all right here. All right. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up yours again real quick and let's see where what you have here you have two things i'm gonna open it up in here i think i well should i open up in here or should i open up in photoshop maybe i'll open up in photoshop i think this is a character design so let me find my photoshop there you go i'll do that open I love how it just constantly does that. All right. Here we go. Okay, we've got, ooh, I like this. We've got a dragonfly. And what do you have to say about this? What are the things that you need help with? So let's go ahead to your docs right now and take a look. All right, it says, hi, I am Iris Azularis. I did an image that I uploaded to the folder as a concept of a dragonfly that is supposed to be a thopter, a small flying machine with steampunk aesthetics. But instead I thought it would, instead of, but instead I thought in a character with a science fiction alien style, I was inspired by the proto style of StarCraft, jewelry and photos of magic stones. It's a machine that doesn't have feelings, but it is not evil. This is a concept. I would like to make an illustration and maybe animation. However, I don't know how it would move and the tail is supposed to be connected with energy. Okay, so, oh, I get it. So it's kind of like magnets. If you think of the energy as sort of magnets, um, but mechanically speaking, you would still create, um, I would say, uh, uh, as if it were, were joints. The, where the joints would be is where those en magnet energy fields would be. Um, it's really cool looking. It feels, it doesn't feel steampunk to me. Um, I know you're saying it's supposed to, uh, it was uh, a flying machine with the steampunk aesthetics, but instead I thought it would be a character with a science fiction alien style. Got it. Protostyle from StarCraft. Now, what is StarCraft? Can you guys give me a little hint on and what StarCraft is so I, I know a little bit about that? Um, let's see here. Uh, Zula says, thank you. I would like to know how to prepare the character for 2D animation workflow. Got it. Okay. So you've got a, you've got a cool design. One of the things I would do is, um, now that I, I kind of... Can you tell me Azularis, Azularis um, oh, it's a video game. StarCraft is a video game. So let me look up that. I just, I just always like to educate myself on what we're looking at here. So StarCraft. Uh, I'm looking it up now. All right, StarCraft video game is a 1998 military science fiction real-time strategy game developed and published by Blizzard Entertainment. Oh wait, or is it StarCraft Remastered? The latest version was August 2000 or August 2017, and it's science fiction media. Uh, yep, StarCraft, got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. I'm just looking at um, images. And then the thing that you said that it was sort of mimicking. Uh, uh, Protus. Protus? I'll just do, I'll just put in Protus real quick. Uh, Protus. Protos. Aha. Old N new it's showing me images from old and new okay all right so it's got a um an alien metallic metal like feel to it 
it feels kind of, I mean, when I'm looking at it, and I, and I apologize, it feels a little bit like it could have come out of um, some sort of Egyptian artifact, um, the way it's sort of designed and, and look and feel of it. Almost like uh, Stargate. Like I, I kind of went to Stargate for some reason, my, my mind did. Not that it's, it, that's what you're trying to emulate. Um, the old Stargate movie and then the TV series that they came out with uh, that went on for quite a long time. I'm just going to put a little uh, background in here. And then we're going to, I'm going to knock this back a little bit. Uh, let's see if we can see all this. So you want to know how to prep it for animation. So one of the first things I like to do, and you guys know, is I research, research, research. Um, steampunk, I, I think of, if you want it to, now, Azurlis, do you want it to be, yes, it is similar to a Stargate, it's true, okay. Do you want it to feel st steampunk, or you don't want it to feel steampunk? That's the big question. You, you're kind of staying away. You want it to, I guess steampunk was meaning you wanted it to be mechanical, just the mechanical feel. Um, other than that, yeah, just let me know uh, what it is that you, you want to do. Uh, with this. So because there's 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 certain things about this that um, we can totally create in terms of prepping this. Now you're wanting you're gonna want to figure out how to move the mechanics when you're doing this for 3D animation. Um, you, you're gonna want to do a front side and, and Bach maybe a top view uh, or three-quarter just to see how and then you're going to also want to do poses that show you how this thing is mechanically supposed to move around. Uh, let's see here. Thopters used to be steampunk, but I like more of the StarCraft and Stargate feel. Got it. Uh, maybe I can send you the mood board. Um, no, for, for now, maybe at a later date we can see the mood board. But for time's sake, since it's super, super late for you, I want to dive into this and see if we can, we can talk this through as we go. Again, I love, I love the design of it. I'm just going to do a few of my own, like, just to get used to the shape language. I'm, I'm just going to draw over it real quick. And what I'm, what I'm assuming with this thing is that you're going to have a, uh, you know, I like to draw through things, if you haven't noticed before. Drawing through this helps you figure out what that shape is going to be. You've got um, a shape here along with another shape that kind of attaches to that. So if you look at that shape from the side, um, it feels like the eyes might be up here. I would, again, try to design this from all different angles so you know the look and feel of it. Now, I'm not going to draw all the extra details. All I'm going to do is try to draw how I think the shape could be from a, uh, from a profile view, like so. And I'm wondering if you want to have sort of an energy feel that's even around here or if you want to have a joint that connects the head to this. I mean, one, one of the things that you could do is have it feel like it's, um, it's got this sort of energy feel that's right there. Now this is the eyes here and the eyes here. And this sort of attaches like so. Um, and the other thing is like these, these arms, if you want to create, um, you could almost have all of these things sort of their own separate shapes that are connected through that, that magical part. Um, so if you, you know, represent it in terms of circles for the, where the joints are almost like ball bearings. And then uh, I'm just throwing ideas out there as we as we're going through this thing. And, you know, and the question is, you know, how articulate do you want it to be? If you look at a real dragonfly, again, I like. Oh, where are you going? Come back. There you go. Um, I'm gonna pull up some dragonflies just because dragonflies are such amazing creatures. Um, mechanic uh, structure. So I'm looking right now, I'm looking at dragonfly fly structure um, just to kind of get a feel of what it is. 
Uh, okay, I upload to the folder for you the mood board. Got it. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look at that in a second here. Uh, let me let me see where that's at. Uh, all right, I see the mood board reference. Let's double double check that real quick. All right, I'm looking at that now. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good. <laughs> uh, it's interesting, uh, your mood board and types of materials and how you want it to have that kind of chrome feel. Ooh, I like this one design. I'm going to grab this real quick. I like this one design right here on the left screen, or the left part, part of this, uh, your mood board board that's got a top view profile view and three quarter uh that's that's an interesting it looks like you kind of took a lot from that and i do like that design and um one of the things i would say is again decide if you want to have you know even though like this section right here has got the glow and then you've got these sections here um i would try to keep this simple maybe Maybe uh, keep keep it more like this shape. Um, and of course, if you look at it from, maybe it does that kind of feel like that. And as so you got all of these different design shapes, but for animation purposes, I don't know if you're three, are you gonna do this? 2D or 3D? That is, that's the question for me. Is this going to be a 2D animated concept or is it going to be a 3D anim animated concept? Um, that will really determine on how you can simplify your shape language and your design um, because you know it's going to be a lot harder in 2D. Now, it's not impossible. I'm just saying it's going to take a lot longer to create these designs in a 2D realm if you're, if you're not going to design it for 3D. So, uh, Zulus, just let me know if you're doing that. Um, because my first instinct would be to simplify this shape right in here. Um, you know, and also I would, I would say that, let's say you could bend, let's say in your, in terms of your shape language, you can bend the tail maybe slightly up and then maybe it can bend slightly down like so. Maybe that's your, this would be your, your distance in which you can uh, move your abdomen or your tail end of the, uh, of the character. So, um, again, let me know what it is that you are planning on doing with this final, the final output for this. Cause I'd be curious to see what you, uh, create as your final look and feel if it's 2d or 3d. But if it was 2d, I would almost keep these shapes uh, either you can do a longer piece, a longer one, and then maybe, uh, uh, you have one long piece here and then a short one. I'm just thinking outside the box right now, uh, for my own sake. And then let's say that the tail is right there, but maybe making these shapes a little bit bigger and having them feel like they would connect by a ball, but it's just an energy field. So maybe that, you know, they would feel like they would have that sort of, um, if, I, if, it was, if I was looking at this tail from, let's say a three quarter behind. And again, I'm just thinking that you'd have a, a shape maybe like this, that's a little bit longer a little bit longer, and then maybe a shorter one. And then these balls here in between are essentially the orb or that blue energy field that connects the two. Um, so I'm just thinking that one base which is connected to the body. Then you have energy field and you have a short one that's here followed by a long, uh, two shapes that are slightly the same size, but longer. And then followed by the short shape at the end. 
that's right there. And then you give yourself flexibility of, let's say if this is the base, the flexibility that this shape can in fact go down like so. Let me get this so we're, we're clear that this is energy field. That would be sort of like right here. So this and this would be your energy field, right, like so, right in here. And I'll just make this black so we can flip between the two. So, you know, this is this is obviously going down this this one right here. It's going up and down. I'm gonna move this over. Uh, let's see here. Um, so it would be like a, a pendulous, uh, a pendulous, a pendulous. Yes. So, um, I would treat it, I would treat it like, just like your finger joints. If you had five or eight, if you had four joints in your finger and it curled, um, my finger can only go up so high, but my finger, but my bottom part can curl really easy. I would try to do the same thing. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up here. And we'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll switch over to TV paint and maybe I'll do a quick uh, pose of how that would be. The other thing is what I, oh, why did it go to that? I have no idea. There we go. Go back to this. There we go. That's what I want. No, nope, that's not the one I want. Where are you, brush? Where'd you go, brush? I don't know how that got switched over. Oh, I see. That's why. I went to the wrong one. There we go. Back to where I wanted to be. All right. So, um, the legs, the, the one thing I want to see, we, we, we kind of got a good idea. I'm, I'm kind of getting a good grasp of this. Let's see here, and you have a shape that kind of connects the neck and then the head, the eyes, like so, and then the mouth. pretty good I like your I really do like this design it's just figuring out the mechanics of it now um, could you explain in more detail how you would change the design for 2d versus 3d and why oh okay well I can do as we're talking about that well for instance the more details you put in this like this let's say for instance this intricate detail that she has in here if, if we say we want to do a full, full on animation of this character, meaning we want to do a full turnaround, uh, if the character is turning in space, let's say I just want to turn that character just more towards camera. And here's, here's the eyes. That shape. I, you know, I have to go in and when we go to tie down and clean up, you know, I have to figure out the perspective. So I have to figure out a grid pattern. Um, it would be good to figure out a grid pattern that would work so that if you're going in perspective from this, this shape to, let's say, this shape, which is going away from you, you know, it's turning away in space versus more of a, a profile shape. That design that's right here, what is it going to look like from this angle? You know, you, you've got, and so when you turn something in space, like I'm doing now, just that design alone gets really complicated when you are going to animate. So it's really important to think about how you can simplify these, all of these details in here 
during the design process. Now, it's not saying you can't throw those designs in, but you have to make sure that you have a consistent breakdown of how you design the character for those who are going to animate it and turn it in space and then eventually clean it up to find a line. You want to make sure you're very clear in how you've got your, your, your proportions set up because it's all about creating a, a detailed model sheet that allows enough information for a, a person to follow up. Let's say, for instance, I, you know, this, this circle, these circles, even if we wanted to keep with the shape that you have, these circles will indicate the roundness of where the aura, the orb or energy field is going to be. And then these are the things or the, the metal pieces that connect into each orb of energy. And all I would say is when you're animating something like this, if every single one of these was a different complex design in terms of the shapes, you can have that, but you got to think of does a certain, would it be better to simplify them and still get the same aesthetic appeal across without overcomplicating it. So this is where, you, and the only way to know that for sure is once you've designed something, do a turnaround of it and then animate it yourself. And then when you start to animate it, you're going to start to see all of the problems that arise from animating the, this character in 2D, particularly in 2D. Now if it's 3D, you can design it however you want because at the end of the day, once you've built that design and sculpted it in there and got the textures and everything that you want, and you've got your your um, you've you've built your your um, bone structure in there and you've you've got everything laid out where you want things to move and pivot, then you're good to go. Um, you really don't have to worry about it. But in 2D, you always have to worry about simplification, complex design. Where can I find the two, the happy medium, so that uh, we're not, you're not killing yourself in the labor intensity of, of what it means to animate something traditional? So, with that being said, um, again, I'll hide this. Um, I personally would take this for me, and I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at the dragonfly one more time because I want to make sure that we have the legs. Yeah, just like I thought. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. So you've got, if you want it to feel, could not use the brush tool because the target layer is in. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, go away. All right, we're going to do another one. So, the you know, the, the way these, these legs are, are built, they, you know, you, you want to make sure that you see what, what does that, leg structure look like underneath. So if this was six legs, let's just put this in here. Let's say this is the under underbelly of that. And then you have your back leg followed by joint and then you have a hook a little hook right here this this little area right here and I would I would I'd, you know what I would do is I would do a little draw a little nice little s curve line to it and then a straight And a lot of times, what um, if you look at the real the real one, it, it, it does the opposite. It come kind of goes like this, and it has a little a hook, like so. But uh, we don't have to do that. We can design this as simple as you want it to be. But I would say this: there would be a joint here, a joint here, and a joint here. If you're going to keep with sort of the mechanics of let's say these uh, character, uh, the dragonfly character. 
So you, you would be, that would be able to pivot, that would be able to pivot, that would be able to pivot. So you can have certain mechanics to move things around. Um, and likewise, let's see, this is underneath. Now we can keep it simple, again, to stay with your design. You can just have this as a, a longer, a longer hook. If it was steampunk, it, it would be interesting to see if you, <laughs> if this was like a steampunk look, you know, you'd have like a, a hydraulic system with the leg and uh, maybe a little hydraulic system uh, underneath and then so that would move up and down you know it would stretch like so or then maybe maybe the joints uh, had little little bearings maybe this section here would would kind of look like this Now this is really getting complicated, right? If you were gonna build this in 3D and make it a steampunk, really get into the design of how a mechanical thing would move and, and if it's all steam-based hydraulics. Um, I like the last, last, I like the joint as a, as a hook. Uh, one of the wonderful animation teachers always said, simplify, simplify, simplify. Roman 825 said, yes, that is true. Azula, in the case of pneumatic joint, would it be more difficult to animate then? Yes, it would be more difficult to animate then. That's why you have your nice aura, simple aura, that kind of, it's magic. It's magic based, so it's, it's great. You don't have to worry about it. But um, simple, simple is always good. So what I always say, when you go into the design phase, have fun with it. Don't worry about whether it's simple or not. Just have fun with it. Because then you can, you, you know, you're not, you're not, um, stopping yourself or holding yourself back from making a wonderful design. But then when it gets down to uh, the designing it, you know, go, your second pass or your third pass or your fourth pass, that's when you start looking at it from, from an animation standpoint. Will this work? Will this animate? Can, what, what can I make? How can I simplify it so that it still has the same look and feel as I did when I made it really complicated, with, but at the same time it, it still has it'll be able to animate easier. Um, again, it's all about follow-up. Who's gonna animate it once you're done with it? Um, can they handle and, and be consistent with your design and style? Um, you know, what if, uh, if you did traditionally animate it, what if you just did a simple S-curve, you know, like this, that connected into it, you know? With this design, like that still feel the same as what you have. Um, because it could be just a matter of when you do, when you do one simple S curve design, uh, maybe, you know, you do have this. Maybe simplifying it like this design right here at the top will help you, uh, you know, it's, it's, it'll, it's simpler, maybe it'll, it's easier when you animate it um, if it's in a 2D format. Now, the other thing that we haven't gotten to is the wings. Now, the wings, the wings are interesting because if you look on, a, on an actual dragonfly, which I'm kind of looking at right now, if I'm looking at this character from the top, um, this character has the eyes that come out, the mouth, the teeth. You have your eyes. They're kind of bulbous and they kind of come out 
from the side right here. And then you have um, what looks like to me is you have a little neck area joint on yours and then you have your body like so. Now again your body has um, this sh sort of shape and then you've got your sections where you want your wings to connect. Now this is here, here, and here. And you want to have enough of a gap between them so that they, because these are muscles that move back and forth. They, this is all muscle uh, for them. And they twist as they go. And they've got to alternate uh, as they go into one another. If you look at a slow motion of how a dragonfly moves, uh, their wings are crazy awesome and complicated, but they're, 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 they're on pivots and they're doing this uh, for wind. And it allows them to kind of, because they have two of them and they're vibrating at a really high speed, it allows them to be able to kind of hover in one spot and turn. They have a lot of ability to maneuver around. So you want to be able to, to A, give yourself enough space for that, like what you're doing here. Um, so even in, in these little ones right here, on that shape, you want to may, maybe just indicate here where your pivot points are going to be for each side and then come out from that. Maybe, maybe you do have stems. Maybe you have this come out just slight, a slight bit. And again, it's one of those situations where maybe you have anywhere there's a joint, it could be an energy field, like an aura, like kind of like what you have here. And if this thing, let's say it loses its power, its, ma its, its, uh, its energy, all of these break apart into pieces and they become artifacts or little pieces. And once they're, once they're put together, then they come to life and they all connect through these energy fields. I'm just thinking in terms of story. Um, but I would create some kind of indication where each one is going to connect, maybe set, bring them out slightly away from the body and then uh, come out from there. Again, I like the shapes that you have. I think the shapes that you have work great. I'm going to, uh, let's see. Uh, Azura says, I, oh, I like that story. Thank you. And then Re Topo 93 says, that's so cool. It, it, this, is, this whole thing is really cool what you're creating, Azularis. I really like it. So again, let's, let's just say this comes in. And I'm just looking at, in terms of design, let's say we, we've got sort of like this shape, like so. And, and you know, maybe you can, you can break it up a little bit here. But you can still keep the, the shape language the same. Um, I'm just trying to think of how you could make this a little bit more interesting and not overcomplicated. And if you notice the, the back wings, they seem to, I don't know if they're equal. I don't know if they're both on the, in a dragonfly, if they're equal in size or they're slightly bigger or it depends on which dragonfly we're talking about here. Uh, they're slightly different in shape and probably because of where they're positioned in the back. Now this one is, is going to be a little thicker down here at the bottom, which you, what you have and we just go right there. So I'm just going to treat it like this. And again, in terms of shape, you know, maybe these, this has a, a joint, a ball bearing kind of uh, feel to it, or maybe it's, it's uh, again, one of those situations where this area that it connects to is uh, energy. And you have your little thing that sticks out right there, plus your shape. And I would go longer, longer, shorter. And 
and then with the eye, with the uh, the head, you gotta you gotta ask yourself how, you know, how would the if this was the the body, uh, would the head uh, move? Now I'm looking. We're looking at it from the the bottom view of it. Say this is the front. Put a little gray. I'm just gonna color this in gray real quick. I mean, I guess I could do the color. That was the under part. That's looking underneath. Can does this can this um uh again this is where you, you start going in your model sheets and you start thinking figuring out the mechanics can this this head if if this is looking down right there can this head you know go Can it turn? Can it twist? And I'm just thinking, you know, again, keeping it really simple, just thinking of how your head's going to turn back and forth uh, with the shapes. Uh, and, you know, I would, of course, because the head, you know, maybe the head only goes to here, to here, up to here, and turns back and forth and can twist. And it's up to you if you want to treat even that joint as sort of this area right here as sort of an energy field. Um, and then, uh, you know, if these things become more of an energy field, so if I, I'll put it on the top layer, maybe, you know, these, these areas right here is an energy field that connects this. Uh, and then this is an energy field right here that might connect. I put it on a separate layer, but then, you know, this would be an energy field so that the head has more opportunity to these sections right here. This is all of these would be the areas that you would just all of your joints would be nothing but energy fields uh, right there and there here and here that makes sense so far um, and then um, also understand when you're prepping for animation it's understanding the, the mechanics. What, what are your limitations to your head rotations? Uh, we know that this, this uh, the arms, the, the, the legs, you know, how, how far can they come in and stretch out? Uh, and the same with the tail. How much can the tail move back and forth? And I'm just drawing this incredibly loosely to kind of get the look and feel of what, what we're trying to go for here. 
Uh, I'm going to put that in a group. Uh, actually, let me undo that. I'll put that in a group. Uh, these are all separate. I'll add one more layer. There we go. Uh, did I lose you guys so far or are we good, good so far in terms of how uh, I'm talking about this? So for instance, if we're going to uh, do this, the eyes, let's say the eyes right there and we've got the mouth. the body. I'm going to drop this all down right here. I would literally go through each one of these. Make sure I have you have a definite point because the body here, this body, the main part doesn't flex. It's not movable. It's it's a it's rigid. So this is this circle and this circle is an indication where the the pivot point point is going to be. Uh, Roman eight twenty five says just thinking about for story purposes whenever the dragonfly turns on. Energy fields could turn on and feed into the next one, so it'll power up. It could also give you something to play with if one of them breaks or goes down. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting idea. Um, but remember, now when you're getting into prepping this for animation, um, you want to know the mechanics of a dragonfly. I mean, there's you know, depending on how realistic you want to go with it, you can cheat. Um, you can cheat anything you want to your for your purposes, but um, since this is going to be, uh, I'm going to just design something here. Try to keep with, with what you have. I'm trying not to look at the dragonfly reference, so I'm not totally destroying your design. Um, but the, you know, I would keep, I would probably keep these let me erase this. I would probably keep these at least the, the size proportion the same length as you know this this distance to here the same as this distance to here. Keep these distances the same. Um, and then also understand when you watch a dragonfly, again also uh, we've got the arms. You want to know how these move. Do these, you know, these go out? Uh, do they rotate forward? Do they extend? How much flexibility do you want to give? If you know, if this is one, two, three, you know, it's extending this way. It's straightening out. Um, it's it's, you know, turning to the side. And then your back leg might be a little bit longer um, like they are typically with uh, insects. The, you know, maybe this back leg is going away a little bit. And then you have that hook for that back leg. And again, it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to have these as joints. We can keep them as simple ball bearing joints or if you want to have them as anything that's a joint in energy field. 
but when you draw, you're going to draw it the same. You're, but you're going to give, you're going to, for your final look and feel, you're going to take that line that would be used for the, the energy and you would turn that into some sort of, a, pull some sort of effect like glow effect over it as you do it. So with these things, the wings, you're going to want, the wings are going to move, uh, they're going to rotate and up and down. And this is where you're going to look at a dragonfly mechanics to make sure that you have these, these two move in formation with one another so that they're not overlapping each other. Um, because one does overlap the other. Now, I'm going to look at uh, dragonfly wings in slow motion. Let's look at what it looks like in slow motion video. I'm going to see if I can find, oh, this is cool. Okay. So I found this video. First thing I found, it's uh, dragonfly wings in slow motion, smarter every day, 91. Uh, it looks like it's got like 1 million views on YouTube and it's literally, I don't know if it's okay to show this. I'm, I'm assuming it's okay. I, I don't know but I'll just play this little bit right here so you can kind of see it if it plays. Now, I think that the, he was saying, what do you think that hole is for? I think that hole was for breathing, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if I'm pretty sure of that, but I, I think I remember hearing that, but it's really cool to see how these, these things, the, it's all muscle based. It's all pu pushing and pulling where the joints are for the dragonfly. And the only reason you're doing this is using it for the purposes. Yeah, it's the trachea. It's for breathing. That's where I was right. Um, the only reason I'm showing you this is because, um, understanding the mechanics of that, uh, will really help you look at how you approach your energy field when you, you know this is where you can simplify things all you need to know is that that energy field is going to keep everything connected um, for your proportion so yeah it's tricky but it's not impossible it's just understanding it and then and then all you're doing and i know it's i'm saying all you're doing that's this is all you need to do no, it's not all you need to do. It, you have to always, referencing and researching is always going to be the hardest and, and tedious part in practice. Uh, because once you practice it, then you start to see where you can simplify things and still have the same look and feel of, of what you think your dragonfly is supposed to look like. Meaning you don't have to do it perfectly like the mechanics of a real dragonfly you can take the aesthetics of what you've learned from the mechanics of a dragonfly and just apply it in a very simple way or you can go as complex as you want with it to the mechanics of the flight in which uh, a dragonfly moves. You know, the way these wings move allows them to have a lot of flexibility. And you notice how, how intricate the muscles were in that showing the top part of the, that. That allows them to give them total flexibility and movement. This is why these things can hover, they can, back, they can go backwards, they can go forwards, they can turn left to right, they can spin around and then they can take off moving forward. I'm just gonna put a little black and white to this. A little grayscale here. So again, um, I'm going to grab, uh, let's see here. Oh, that's not what I want. I'm going to look at a 
I like this guy. The smart, smarter every day. I've, I've, I've seen this guy's stuff before, and he's, he's pretty awesome. He, he explains so many different things. If you ever, if you haven't seen him before, um, I'm trying to get to a part where we're actually seeing. Just look at this. If you can go to Dragonflies in slow motion, smarter every day. Um, even that video alone is is a great video to look at, and um, it'll give you a better understanding about how dragonflies really work. Uh, oh, let's see if this video. I'm gonna. Oh wow. Okay. You guys are going to find this really cool, I think. All right. So I'm just going to play this without the sound. And I just want you to watch the wings. And again, this is all part of you asking the question, how do you prep for animation? Well, you need to understand the mechanics of this and then you, you, you can go as realistic or as simple as you want with it, just as long as you know um, how simple it is and how complex it is and where you can define what makes a dragonfly a dragonfly. Because even with, like, let's say hummingbirds, you know, you can draw a hummingbird uh, and you can draw, and, and if you were doing it at 60 frames per second, you'd be able to see, or 80, I think maybe 120 frames per second, you'd be able to see every little nuance and movement of that, that um, the wing moving with a hummingbird. But when you're animating it at 24 frames per second, you're not going to see that. You're going to see blurs. You're going to see stretches. You're going to see things. And so that's where you can, as, an, as a design element, figure out, well, I'm not going to see at, in the slow motion video I'm going to show you, you're not going to see every little movement, but you're going to understand the mechanics of it. And from there, what you would do in 24 frames per second versus 80 frames per second, you're going to find a, a blur drawing or a stretch drawing that's going to emulate that quickness or that twist and turn. And that's how you're going to simplify it in your design in terms of how you're going to do the mechanics. So it's up to you when you do, you, we prep it for animation, you're more than likely going to do like, maybe there's going to be a blur, uh, let's say between, maybe there, maybe there's a stretch drawing that, that goes, uh, you have a stretch drawing that goes from the first, I'm just going to use one wing as an example. Maybe this is the first key, and then you have the, the second key that's going one way. That's a blur effect. And then you, you've got, um, maybe this is turning. It's spinning, and it's going down, and you're, you've got your third. And then when it's going back up again, maybe you have another drawing that maybe you have, you see a drawing uh, maybe you start to see a care, uh, one of the wings in between, but then you also have stretch, a stretch drawing here and a stretch drawing here for the shape, and then you blur this out, and then you have, so this would be number four, and then you, of course, then you may maybe have a different key for the up position again that does something slightly variance, of, a slight variance of key one, and then you do it again, maybe you do another one, that has another blur, and then you loop those. So if you give yourself three, let's say three to four frames of stretching in between, but you, between the first key and the last key of the all down position and the up position, you do a stretch drawing going in one direction and a stretch going, going in another direction, and then you do that again, but slightly different, with different variances of the first loop, now you're creating one loop down, one loop up, one loop down that's slightly different, one loop up that's slightly different going up, and then you're going to loop it back into the first one. So it gives you a variety of stretches and blurs for that wing that you're going to animate. I hope, hopefully that makes sense. Um, because studying the high speed, which we'll see here, which you're gonna find really, really cool, and watch this. 
it's moving forward, gliding, because the, the wind is picking them up because they, they're light. And you've seen them. They, they can literally float there at some point. And then as it starts to go down, boom, it starts to kick in. But look at what it's doing. See how they're alternating to the wing patterns. The one in the back and the one in the beginning. And they're also, they're, they're like gliders. Whoop, I'll pause that real quick. They are literally like gliders. They're independent of one another. The, the, the one in the left back, the one in the right back, the one in the front left, the one in the front right, all have their own independent pivots that are adjusting to the wind, which is really cool. Again, I'm over analyzing this because I think the best part to learn how to simplify something is to know how complex it is. And then you can go back from there to simplify your action. So, and then once you know that, and also you know that this action and this, this action of this wing versus this wing are gonna alternate. One, they're not gonna, one way to avoid them, one will come down as the other one's coming up and vice versa, like you kind of saw in that video. So just watch the video, look at it, look at a couple other videos, and then that will give you a better understanding of how you're going to turn this character around and fly it. Um, hopefully this helps you guys. Um, <laughs> Brush Mechanic says, Evernude, the Rescuers, and Dragonfly, correct? Yeah, you can also look at... Evernude is an awesome character to look at. Look at the stretch drawings. Look how they approach design with Evernude. Let's see if I can find Evernude from, from Rescuers here. So just so we can look at the, the difference. Evernude Rescuers animation. Let's look at that, what we got here. Here he's sleeping. We'll just watch him for a second. See how they're, they're alternating the blurs between? They're not really doing, uh, at some point when he's getting really fast. See, they, in their instance, the way they're doing it, they're using a variance of, uh, lines to kind of show the 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 the, the, um, the wings in between but you can do a combination of different things uh, with digital you can do stretch or blur you can do uh, gaps you know let's I'm looking at this right now and I'm thinking let's try before we go to the next drover let's try and do a little test just so we can kind of see what I'm talking about all right, we'll pause that for a minute. We'll go over to our other drawing here and let's, let's get to, I'm just gonna go in here and draw this. I'm just gonna put this one down here just to keep it as a body, just for the bodies. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a 20 frame. And then I'm going to add another layer. And I'm just gonna look at, I wanna look at the uh, dragonfly wings of the slow motion one because that one to me was pretty cool. I wanna make sure that I Look at how they alternate. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at, again, I'm looking for the timing of it. What, look at, the, just look at the timing of this.
you notice they don't quite hit. They're just enough away from each other that they don't overlap each other. So, and that's the kind of vibe that we might want to try to get with this. Um, your pal Druby says, yes, Rescuer is done. Uh, Rescuer is the first one is, is really cool. Evanrude is a, is a great character. He's just got a really nice, nice feel about him. Um, let's see here. Whoop. There we go. Uh, pencil, soft. See what I'm doing? I'm also trying to think of uh, what it's what it's going to be doing. It's going to be kind of coming forward and then back again. And you're not going to really see this one. So I'm just going to do, see if this works. I'm just going to do a quick test again to see if my theory is correct or my line of action is correct. And then uh, I'll put this back there, and then this one maybe back there. I'm just going to get pieces of that back there. And I'm just trying to do
see if this, I'm just doing a rough pass to see if this would work. I've, I've actually never animated a dragonfly before, so this will be my first. Uh, yes, I'm warming up. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. All right. And then let's see here. I'm going to grab. I think I'm going to grab this one. And then. And then we're going to go. I think I could do it this way. Copy this and paste and then go into this. Nope, not that one. Now I want this one. Copy. Paste. And then grab this. So then this, let's see here. Do this as a loop. I don't know if it's going to work, guys. We'll see. See it 30 frames. Or we do this. I'm going to go backtrack. I'm going to hide. I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy these. Copy, select the layers. I'm going to add, hide this, paste. Now we're just going to look what it looks like from three. When you find, this is where you start experimenting. Like, so I'm like, okay, I like this, but I don't like it. So what I want to do is um, look at ways that you can rotate. Like, so one of the things I would do is if you're animating a character, let's say, I'll get rid of this, this character. And you're going to want to animate the body first. Like so. The way I would approach it is two things. You animate the body. First, you figure out, you do a couple of uh, cycles of how you're going to figure out the blurs because the, the, that's literally just a verse pass. You go, oh, that doesn't work. Let's try a different thing until you finally get the look and feel of what a dragonfly could look like. And what I could do is I'll look at it in fast motion because that's what we're going to really see is the fast motion part and how do we translate that in design. When you go to, once you figured out the design that you want, the cycle that works, 
then you start to animate the body. Like, let's say, literally, you could just animate this. Um, it's, it's, it's coming up to here. And we'll do, um, I'll do four. Six. Let's say the, the body is, is oh, I got to get rid of that, zero. Uh, we'll put that on 20. We'll put that in 20, like so. So let's say the body is moving up up here, it goes up, and then maybe it does a little anticipation and then goes down. The reason why I'm showing you this is because once you, again, the idea is prepping for animation, find a design, see if it works, animate a rough pass, do a cycle of it in place, and then when you animate something like this, you always want to do the wings last because once you figure out the pattern that you like that's going to work with the wings, that, that feels like dragonfly wings flying, then it's a matter of moving this character in space the way you want it to hover and maneuver and move around. And then you add the, the same technique of patterns that you like for the wings, but then the wings are going to turn in space while still maintaining that same pattern. Um, that's why I'm saying it's once you figure out the cycle, then you do the body, move it around in space the way you like it, time it out, and then you add the the using your reference for the cycle that you created, then you're going to add your wings to it on a separate layer. And it's as it turns in space, you're still going to be using those stretch patterns and blurs that you like. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 I'm seeing a lot of people say, uh, uh, wow. Okay. So do, 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 do. Wow, man, you guys have got a whole bunch of stuff here. I like this a lot. Same, it's awesome, it's wonderful. One of my favorite Disney, Fox and Hound. Okay, Sword and Stone, blah, 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 blah. Man, you guys are just, I'm trying to catch up with like drawing and all of a sudden you guys are doing, talking about other stuff. Okay, uh, Azura, cycle, then the body, then the wings. Yes, cycle, then the body, then the wings. Yes, exactly. So. So this is coming in, and then let's say I'm just going to do him coming in. The body is right here. comes down, he dips, goes whoop, sits there for a second.
All right, it's going to come up. Say it hovers there for a second. And then Again, I haven't even touched the legs or the wings. You know, this is just getting the main body mechanics that you'd want. And then I'm going to make sure that I have, I'm going to loop this. I'm going to make this one big loop. Do the cycles in your head or are you winging it? Ha ha ha, very funny brush mechanic. Um, uh, Billy Jean says, I keep over uh, overthinking before animating anything and just, and this just made me realize I just need to sit down and do it and then I can actually, and then, and, and that I actually can. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, you guys, you realize the whole key to this is just doing it. You can, you can ask yourself questions until you're blue in the face. You can say, Travis, what's the best thing to do? I mean, look, I'm literally making mistakes and trial and error in front of you live. I don't have a problem. You know, I, I'm animating for years and I still mess up. And I don't have a problem saying, you know, hey, I've never done this before. Let's try it. I'm literally just doing it. And the thing is, don't have a fear of what it ends up being. If it doesn't work, then try it again. I mean, that's what I do. And you know at the end of the day, I'm so determined with what I do that I'm going to make it look right because I'm determined to make it look right. And that's where you, you just got to pers be persistent and persevere through those rough spots. And that's where you learn the most. If you don't have those rough spots, you're not learning. That's just how I see it. Again, I'm just, when you, when you do these really, really loose drawings, like I'm doing now, and I'm gonna make sure that, I'm gonna put that last key, that loops, paste. This is what it's going to loop into.
All right, so I'm just going in and just trying to get this <clears throat> to fit the way I want it to work. It's turning in space away from you. Head's going this way. I'll just spin it up into. There we go. Oh, I love how you guys are talking to each other. This is good. Oh, by the way, how does everyone like Discord? And if you like it, how can we get more people to go to Discord? And what do you want in the Discord more than what we're already doing? Um, we've got some big things happening already, which is basically we're going to be getting... Um, we're going to be doing a live event soon and that live event is going to be a paid live event. And we're, I'm going to be, first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a workshop on storyboarding for TV and we're going to be doing it probably, hopefully um, for the end of February, I want to do a live event where we're going to be selling tickets for you guys. And we're, it's going to be uh, an event where we're, I'm just going to go through the how approaching TV storyboards and then, um, then we're gonna. It's gonna be another series where later on, maybe the next month after that, or two months from there, we're gonna do how to animate uh, features. But it's going to be an event that we'll be selling in our store. And I want to know if you guys would be totally down for doing that. Um, and I also want to be able to figure out how we can spread the word with Discord and Sketch to Animate and get more people to kind of see what we're working on, what we're doing. Uh, let's see here. I'm sorry, I'm looking at this going right here. Three, three. This is where he settles. He's, we'll put this at 14. Let's see what that looks like. He's flying around. Oh, we want it to stop right at... 112. All right, let's see how that looks. Oh, there's a little glitch. Let's see where is that. Hmm, here it is. Make that a little longer. Take out that drawing. that drawing I think we'll take out this drawing Mm. 
this one, I think. We can curl it a little bit. I think what I don't like about this it goes into it's going to loop into that let's play that and see what that looks like yeah Twenty-five. So, when we go into this and we do like, let's say we we find some rough pattern that we like, and we want to loop him around, then we're gonna do some in betweens on him, maybe break him down. I'll fix that little that little pop right there. Basically, we're gonna we want him to feel like he's buzzing around and feeling. Then we're gonna then you can start adding your wing patterns over that. Uh, okay, let's see here. Um, I'm looking at what I say. HG says, I think if you spent part of the live stream talking about some of the Discord challenges, some of the work people have done, it might help with getting more members on. Okay, awesome. And then Roman says, absolutely. You pal, Drew says, thoughts and prayers with you and your family. Okay. Billy Jean, I hope everything's okay. Um, I, 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 I'm, haven't been keeping up with the messages, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm drawing G's. I mean, if you want to get the word out about Discord, maybe do some collaborations with different YouTubers and streamers. It might be fun, and you can promo the server. Uh, Roman says, drawing G's, it would be cool if Proco could collaborate. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Okay, I hope everything will be fine. Well, Billie Jean, I don't know what's going on, but I hope everything's okay. Um, I just haven't been able to catch up with reading what's going on back and forth here. But um, in terms of collaboration, my brother and I are going to be collaborating on stuff. So um, hopefully we'll be doing, uh, we can do something where I, I get, uh, we are already, I already have, you guys haven't noticed, I have Dustin uh, hopped over to Discord. And so he's joined our Discord. And um, we've got, um, who else do we have? Uh, we're, we're looking, I've, I've been talking to Aaron because they don't want to do a discord at the moment. So all, anyone that's over, over Aaron streams can come over to discord and join us and then, uh, join our challenges and what we're trying to do there. Uh, I was thinking about doing some kind of figure drawing night where we maybe do a, you know, a live stream on just discord and just have like drawing night where we. I don't know. I don't know when I can do this, um, but I was thinking, let's say, get get one of the kids or Chocho. -cho, you know, we can just pose, and I could just do a live live demo on what I what a one minute uh, gesture drawing looks like versus a two minute gesture drawing versus a, a five minute pose. You know what those look like and how they work and how you can incorporate them into your storytelling. So that could be another thing that we can do. Uh, Oh, sketch the anime. Corona took a family. Yes, I'm very sorry to hear that, um, Billie Jean. Um, for, unfortunately, and I'm really sorry, uh, another another one of our members also lost someone very close to them as well. So it's it's been really tough on a lot of people. You know, I was nervous flying. I had to fly to Florida to see Aaron. Of course, we, we did everything we could to follow protocol with flying because I hate, I, I haven't flown once since this whole pandemic, but I needed to go down to see Aaron. And um, so we did all the precautions. So now we're, we're isolating ourselves for the next two, two weeks to make sure that we're good. And we're going to, luckily there's a place to get tested. We can go get tested and um, the, the vaccine might be available for us soon uh, here in this area. So, but again, it's, it, it, this is a tough time for everybody. And I, I'm really sorry to hear that. That, that happened. Uh, no, no new models, guys. Life Fantasy X. That, yeah, there's absolutely no new models. I mean, A, there's an age 
limit. There's it's, we have 16 year olds that are on the Discord, so you you guys know that I keep a very pretty much a kid friendly uh, live stream as well as uh, my Discord. So that the idea is that we would talk, have uh, clothes models, and we would also do and that that's also would be a good time to do talk about drapery or folds or how you know sh you know sh the shape of something like the show you know the sweater fits on someone's arm maybe we can go through sessions like that i know aaron's been doing that um talking about drapery and different things like that so i think that would be pretty cool um let me do something here so i've kind of beat a, beat this to the ground azura uh azularis so i hope what i've talked to you guys about the idea of approaching and prepping for in particular the dragonfly model kind of helps you now if i had more time i i will go in and do even more in depth and talk about like you know something like a wing going from here i mean we can do this right now i'm already doing it might as well if there's a pivot point that is like say right here I'll just make this a different color. Let's say it's a circle. And we're just gonna keep that right there. You could do something like this. We break it up. I was saying that having a reverse cycle blur, you could break it up this way. The other approach I'm thinking here when you have the, the wing, let's get rid of this. Uh, you can do another thing, which is creating a grid system to make sure that all of that stays in an arc. And I'm going to do that right here. If I have a wing that comes down like this, then I have the other wing that's right there. This is my path of action. Then I am going to get rid of this. Yes. And you just practice different, trying different methods of things that might work if this is leading into this pose that's going down then everything else would 
let's say, I'll just do a slight blur. And it goes into this key. And then this one goes going up. And following that path. And then we do another one. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. We'll do it on eight, uh, eight frames. And you might even want to, um, you know, just depending on how we, we do this, I'm going to do another, another pattern, a different pattern. Maybe the wings right there. See if that even works. Let's see if that even works. Uh, wait, let's make sure. Ah, I accidentally deleted the first pose. Let's put it right here. My bad, I accidentally deleted that first pose. Let's put that back up in there. You can put a little blur on this as well.
see if that even works. And again, it's all about experimenting with it. You know, finding something that's, let's get rid of uh, that. Hide that pattern. And sometimes, I'm just, I'm thinking here, because if you look at the Evinrood one, it's almost like they kept, even when that thing was coming down, they still kept the image up there just a little bit longer. And we, what, I mean, we could even hold those for two if we wanted to, to see if that even works. And then sometimes you can even add an extra layer over that. Uh, it's all, it's all good. Uh, wait, where were we saying? I believe she said just, the first is, is just nudes and the second has nudes and clothes. Uh, thanks Anita. Anita linked some free mo Okay. Um, oh, I see you guys are just talking amongst yourself. Okay. I'm getting rid of this. I'm going to add another blur section to this again. Uh, motion blurs. Oop, cancel that way. Again, there's all different ways that you can try to apply the, the technique. I'm gonna look at Everroot again one more time because there's, you could do a, a plethora of different ways. But again, the process uh, without going too far off topic was design the mechanics, figure out what, how you want the mechanics to flow, then develop a cycle that works like I'm trying to experiment right now and then go into animating just the body and then adding the, the perspective changes in space with the wings that we're doing. So, um, at any rate, let me hide this. Um, I am going to look at one more thing because I am stuck on this whole dragonfly thing. And then we're going to go to the next uh, draw over, um, which is Dakota's. Let's see here. Where are you, Evan Rude? Animating dragonflies. Let's see if anything pops up. Let's see if any videos pop up that. Now I'm going to look at a dragonfly. Let's look at a dragonfly in normal speed.
dragonfly in flight. Now again, this is the best way to know. I don't want slow motion. I want a regular dragonfly. They do a lot of gliding. That's the that's the one thing I've noticed with the dragonfly. There's a there's a combination of and that's that's the probably the key to a dragonfly is having a, a bit of poses where it's like gliding, then vzz, then stopping, then vzz, then stopping to give it a variance of the timing. And that's probably something that could let's see let's just for giggles here. Uh, let's see what that would look like if I did a, we did a couple of cycles of that. Uh, copy selected images, paste, paste, and then we, and we literally have it. Hold for a little bit, then paste, and then let's see. It might be interesting to do a couple of wing flaps and, and patterns where you break it up and you have them where you have you see the overlapping uh wings kind of come together so if i was going to do an opposing let's see if i did this i copied and pasted this copy layer paste layer i'm now i'm just experimenting i'm going to try something here and then i grabbed all of this Say, I'm going to offset the timing. Say this. And I'm going to move this. Cut selected images. Paste selected images. There you go. And then I'm going to select all let's put it right there and then hmm current group Did I do it wrong? Current layer, let's do it this way. Just alternating this. gonna look like a mush isn't it probably gonna look like mush um, then this is gonna move to about there and then Oh, it's not going to work. I know why it's not going to work. 
because I didn't do the opposite. Let's see here, move this back here. Move. No, nope, not gonna work. I'll just hide it. So, and anyway, I'll I'll just experiment with this later. Um, I think if you did a series of patterns, azura, azurus, azurus, um, uh, see, so I saw your pal Drewby just haven't had enough time to devote. The wing is turning out so great. Okay, so basically. I'm gonna. I think what I'm gonna do because this is this is really fascinating me now because I've never really animated a dragonfly. I'm gonna animate a dragonfly. I'm gonna go through and actually experiment with this, see if I can come up with something that's got a really cool pattern to it. Um, I mean, when you look at when you look at these things like this, look at this insect flying. Oh, not that dude, but the insect flying. That's pretty cool. So. Back to what we were doing before. You've got your, your dragonfly, you've got your wing patterns. Um, I say study the slow motion mechanics of it, then study it in normal motion. Look at how they fly. Find a simple version to translate into animation using a series of stretch poses um, to kind of, you know, stretch poses in between, something that works. And then, um, and I would make them transparent because. Uh, if you looked at the Evinrude version, where someone, you know, they designed it Evinrude. You'll see that, um, there he goes. That the, the, their choices of pattern is purely a design choice of, based on the mechanics of how a real dragonfly flies. Uh, skip add. There you go. Okay, this is good. All right. Let's look at this for a second. See that? This is this is great. Look at look at this again. And even then, you don't really see a lot of line brush lines like I have. It's literally, let's see if we can I don't know if we can go through it slow motion. Let's see if we can look at this in 0.25 and see what that looks like. See how they're varying the poses? And they're and each one is holding for certain amounts of frames. That's the that's the key that we're trying to get at. And then see how it's they've and what they did was they animated this first, the body, when they wanted to get that that action going in. Let's look at this one more time. See, he comes in. Look at that nice S. They animated, they went in and animated the body first to get that nice S curve going in. And then they decided to go in and do the, the wings afterwards. You see him coming in, up, comes in, nice S curve going, settles in. And what's interesting, <laughs> they, they decided to make a tail feel like a tail. And do you notice anything else that they did here? They didn't give him those extra legs. So now he's just got arms and legs, it looks like, which is kind of interesting. Now his legs could be covered up in his sweater, but I, I never noticed that before that he only had four, four appendages. And then even then you can see how if you watch it, everything's set on a separate la layer. Oh, there's one, looks like one little stretch. Ray, it's anticipation up. Ah, oh, I missed it, it's gone. I couldn't grab it. But the, also the key is to keep that, um, because it's moving so fast to keep it as a transparency so it feels like it's you can see through it just like if you watched a, a pattern of a move that out of the way a pattern of like a a fan 
All right, so let's go to Dakota. I hope that was helpful. I know I, I was talking a lot. Of, I was going around in circles at one point because I was, I was, my head was stuck in trying to figure out the mechanics of the wings as I've never actually animated these guys before. That's why I'm fascinated. Like, I want to do this now. Oh, you can frame, Life Fantasy says you can frame by frame YouTube videos with comma and period keys. What? All right. I'm such a boomer. Comma and period keys. Let's play it again. I just saw Life Fantasies tell me that. All right. Let's get to. All right. Comma and period keys. Oh. Okay. There you go. This is cool. And what's interesting is they're not doing any blurs, it looks like, in this whatsoever. I'm going to do this in normal speed. Oh, there's a blur. see blur you can see that they blurred it out in there and then they have they held it there for a couple of frames there for a couple of frames blur there for a couple of frames blur blur interesting Oh, you know what? I'm looking at this. Gap, nothing, gap, nothing. And then they're alternating the hold poses. You can see a little bit of blur in there and there. That's cool. Okay. I'm kind of, all right, I'm going to come back to this, guys, and I'm going to animate something with that effect and see if it comes out later on. So thank you, Life Fantasy X, for that little tip on commas and periods. Uh, Zero, thank you a lot for the feedback and for the animation test. Okay, cool, awesome. So let's go into uh, Dakota. Uh, let's see, Dakota, if I can download, I hope I can download this. Uh, I'm clicking that, click, click, all right. You got to download, I was able to download it. All right, awesome. So I'm going to go to Downloads real quick. So we have a street layout and something completely different. All right, so Travis, hope all is well. Um, today is a layout of a side street on looking at church in a distance in Hallstatt, Austria. The drawing is relatively light and still very loose and sketchy. The plan is to do a watercolor is to do watercolor brushes over the line work. This will be a static long shot and will be used for a chase between Clive and a few guards. We are mainly looking for overall critique before we go far into it, uh, far, far, but advice on cleanup would be helpful. We do want to preserve the underdrawing we have been looking at, rescuers, <laughs> which is ironic, rescuers, which is what we were just watching, and 101 Dalmatians, which is another one that we were talking about, Robin Hood, etc. As a bonus, it would be nice to have some help on how to approach light detail, especially in the smaller areas. We were thinking of adding light flags, f flower beds, but only if time permits. Appreciate all you guys do. Rest in peace, Dale Bear. Yes, rest in peace, Dale Bear, for sure. Dakota Bragdon. So, um... 
This is a chase scene, so I'm assuming, I don't know if it's a lock shot or not. Again, I would go into looking, let's see here, what do you got? All right, right there, I'm gonna knock this down really low. It makes it easy for me. Um, again, if I'm, if I'm looking at this, I, I say overall, um, put, you know, if you're doing any kind of, let's say, um, the character, let's say you're, get my brush to work. I'll do it right here. If you're, stroke, yes. Let's say your, your camera starts here and then it moves, um, maybe a little bit, opens up a little bit more, comes over here. And then it, maybe you follow, as you follow them along, it might drift up a little bit, staying at the same uh, field size, field guide size or camera size, camera lens. And whoop. either maybe it drifts up as you're following them along. I'll do this stroke right there. So your essentially your camera is going this way. It's 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 opening up, it's it's following sort of a pattern of following the character that's running this way. If the character maybe is, you know, this size and he's running. This is where scene planning really plays in. Once you do a layout, scene planning is where you take the path of action based on the storyboards. You take your storyboards and go, okay, the character is going to be doing a pan and we're going to be following in this master layout. Uh, the character runs this way and he goes down the street away from camera. And then when you go to layout, you, you create the, the, the layout you want. Maybe you want to push, maybe if this is the master layout up here, you want to push your, your street maybe a little bit wider. Maybe it, it comes, you know, maybe like this. You can still use your reference for the type of location that you're thinking of. But maybe you want to push where it's going. And by the, the type of camera lens you use, we're gonna make this, I'm drawing this out. Maybe your, your character, you know, there's a door here. This is the corner and it spins around. Maybe you have that kind of vibe where it's, it's, it's going more towards you and away from you. Uh, you know, first things first, I was, I would push to see where you could push things and make it more dynamic. Um, if, if you're doing like what you have here, you basically have, um, go a little darker, go back up here at the top. you get the perspective of, of the street right here, and then it's just straight. Right now it looks like you've treated it kind of like a, like the, the street perspective is kind of 
but it's a two-point perspective or one-point perspective. Actually, it looks like it's two-point. Um, and I always put these grids in for where the layout or the camera, uh, the, the, the direction of everything's going to go. And then you have your sky. And under, in, in the backdrop, you have the streets moving around. I tend, this looks more like, you know, you're following, you're panning across one way and then it just stops. This makes me feel like if I was to, to do this, use this layout, I would just pan with the character until it stops here. And the character turns and, and runs away and the camera just kind of cushions into a, so it's literally an A to B camera move going straight across without changing the camera. I mean, you could open it up. You can go tight in the beginning, and then as he goes away, you can open it up a little bit, or vice versa. Um, you can tighten it up as he's going away, and he's running towards or down the street. So these are the things I would think about, because as you seem plan this, again, you storyboard it. You think about what the, art, the storyboard artist had in mind with camera. You push their idea in layout, like either you can do with this one, or you can go more flat and, and simple with the perspective like this. Uh, you want to pose out where your character starts, like here, and where it's going to go, and where it ends up. This is all part of scene planning, um, and this will also help you uh, kind of figure out where your character is going to go. In this case, you know, this character is coming towards the camera and then going away from camera. This will this may give it a more dynamic feel, more dynamic. And then this is more straight on, a little slightly flatter. And we will take on a different feel of what you're trying to approach in here. This will kind of give you more of an action-y type of vibe, like he's running away from something and going around the corner, and it'll kind of give you more of an intense feel with the perspective change the way I have it, versus this, you could still have the same intensity, it just won't have the same impact, but it depends on the story. Either one can work, it just really depends on how you want to do it. So I would look at your drawing that you have in here, and I would say, okay, where, am, where is my character going to be? Where does it start? Where does it end? Which I don't see in this. Um, and then can I push this line art just a little bit more? Can I, you know, would it be interesting if I, I don't know, uh, push this out a little bit more right here to kind of give this curve and then, you know, you know, have the corner right, like right here. Would it be interesting if I drop this down slightly? And push this up a little bit more right here. Maybe drop this down slightly. Kind of feel like the perspective changes, you know, goes back a little bit further. Would it be more interesting, you know, if I if I pushed it this way, or if I just kept it like you have now, and just um, made my layout like so? I don't. But the one thing I don't see that I'm not getting the connection in this layout is what is happening up in this area. Uh, what is what? Where is what is this? Rooftop, where is my, my rooftop in here? Is this, is there something above it? Um, is this, you know, what, is this supposed to go way up high? And then, then this is, a, it feels like a separate piece or separate element. So, I, and it feels, it's throwing me off in terms of perspective. Um, and then the other thing is when you do, let's say we, we go with this, you know, one of the things you can do with, with watercolors, you want to retain the look and feel of your, your design. Uh, let's see here. Um, 
Rush Mechanic says, good night. Good night. Uh, Roman, hey again, it should just be a PSD file. Okay. Roman says, oh, love the curve idea. It's wonderful. Roman says, this helps a lot. Okay. Um, so again, your, your stages are storyboards. Take the storyboards, translate it to, to layout and, and scene planning. Where is the character starting? Where is it ending? Keep that on a separate layer. Pose out your character. So if the character, let's say the character is here, and then the character runs this way, you know, towards camera, and let's say you're like, looks, looks both ways and starts to run around and then runs away towards camera. And then down the alleyway. Once you've figured out this, then you can say, okay, I want my camera, maybe I want my camera to start here. Maybe I want my camera to start then out here. And then it pans across and I, maybe I follow along with it. Maybe the camera goes down the street with it until he, he disappears behind. Or maybe I leave the camera right here and just let him, let the, the action run out as he disappears behind the, uh, the far corner as it curves around. So when you go to watercolor, one of the things is where is your light source? Like if you, if this is a night shot, um, in order for you to kind of, you're creating lighting for the emphasis of story. So if you want to, to pay emphasis on, let's say the, the character, I'll do this again. And the character is let's, now we're just talking about lighting. The character's here and the character's here, the character's here. And then he eventually, you know, goes down the street and is over here. If you're going to light this, let's say it's a, it's um, I'm just going to do gray tones. And I'm going to do. Uh, maybe we, we want, we want this part of the, we want this part of the street let me get a little bit lighter here I would say just do a nice loose drawing with what you oh what am I doing wrong oh there it is that's why that is why I gotta go down below it there we go that's why all right I'm just going to give this a, as an example. Oh, this is really slow. Why are you going so slow? Man, oh man. Let's try this again. I'm, gonna, I'm going to... Oh, it's just really, really, really slow at the moment. Save. Maybe I need to quit something out. Uh, no, I'll leave that there for now. Um, I'm going to save this. That's what I need to do. Save this out. Notes. Then I will save this out. There you go. Oh, cancel. I'll do, I'll, I'll save these out for later, but you you can look at this at a later date. I'm going to quit out of this or hide this. Quit out of this. All right, let's see if this works now. 
Oh, it is really running slow, guys. I don't know why this thing is running. It races fine, but it's not coloring. Oh, there we go. That's why I had those two things open. Again, keep, you know, I would look at this, redraw it, but still keep that loose line art that you have. Um, and it's really just an emphasis on, on, on the lighting pass when you do your watercolor. If this is a night shot, Maybe it's it's darker at the top. Maybe you have elements of little lighting, lighter areas at the bottom here. Enough to show where the character is, is going. Maybe there's elements where it's darker you know, if it's, a, if it's a darker alleyway and he's kind of going away. If you're doing it natural, like with real drawings and real watercolor, you're going to work from light to dark. You're not going to go from dark to light because watercolor doesn't work like that. Watercolor is the opposite, but if you're going to be doing digital, it really doesn't matter because you can manipulate it and however you want to do it. Um, say, I'm going to throw. I'm going to make it really dark. And let's see. You have a light source of of maybe there's a light up here couple of lights are on and maybe it's just moonlight so you're gonna have a, 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 a maybe a slight cast shadow on the street that's gonna be a little bit lighter maybe the moon's up here and it's shining lights and so you're gonna have a little bit of the darkness of the shadow of the no light here and then you're gonna have a little bit of light shining through down from the moonlight coming down uh, okay all right I'm just looking at hey welcome Peter Steves uh, welcome to our channel yeah we're just kind of going through talking about how to approach certain things so uh, uh, through the draw over process, so I'm going over uh, Dakota's layout. So again, loosely going in here and figuring out, um, this would be, I would say this would be a little bit darker. Maybe have a little, it could be darker at the top here. There's no light there, but there's, that's dark there. I'm just trying to figure out value tones that might work to kind of emphasize the direction what you're going. So I'm, I'm starting to slowly in this, just this area right here, talk about how you can, you know, I'm not looking, the overall thing would be like this sort of dark gray tone. You want to cool, you want to have a nice cool uh, tones with your night shot uh, with some warm lights coming through. Like let's say if there's light, light sources from the windows, then you might want to go a little bit warmer with those white light tones or the, the light tone areas. And then maybe the cooler lights uh, on the ground because it's coming from it's reflecting from the moon so maybe those lights are going to be slightly cooler in terms of your lights and darks and even off in the background maybe there is there's a couple of areas where maybe there's a light on over here maybe these are you know again warmer lights so you're having a cast shadow on the ground from, let's say the moon's up here. 
let's say this is moon up in this area and it's casting a shadow down. So you're going to have your cast shadow of cool colors coming off the building straight down. So, and then just between the two gaps of the alleyway, you're going to have this little bit of light that's shining through. And then um, you might even have a, a, like sort of a, this might be toned down a little bit in the background. It'll, it'll be darker, but you might have, that's going to get pushed back. That could be your darkest dark and your lightest light. Your lightest light is going to be in this area because that's the place where your character is going to run. So you want to make sure that you're creating almost like a natural path of action for your character through lighting of your layout. And uh, just in the painting alone is going gonna, is gonna to help you um, design. So if that character is, let's say, standing right here, I'll hide this. I'll hide this. If the character was... characters were standing there like that then you would have more contrast on him. I'm just testing this out to see how dark. And then you'll have a little cast, cast shadow coming down when he's running. And then there'll be a little light. Coming down. From above. Which is going to give and then you have this darker shadow in the lighter area. Now he's going to be the darkest. You're going to have them probably the most contrast with him in the scene, and then you're going to have your you're going to create your watercolor light and tone light and dark tones with him uh, with the layout in the background to kind of help emphasize his character and the path that he's going to go down, which is he's going to start here. Whoop. Again, like we talked about before, if he's running this way, and then he's he's running that way and then he's running away from camera down the street and down there this is an example of maybe how you would color him as he's going down the street to emphasize a night shot with him having con a lot of high contrast because he's got the light reflecting from the top he's in between the alleyway and as he goes away maybe he gets darker because he gets goes back and down in the shadow now if he goes in the shadow you're still going to make him slightly darker so he might end up looking in, in value like this shape that I have in the background when he goes away and he runs away into shadow. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, your pal Drewby says, good night, good night. Uh, Peter says, okay. Oh, Azuleris is going to bed. Okay, good, go to bed. See you guys tomorrow. Um, let's see here. I might do something on Discord uh, tomorrow, like I said, during the... Uh, I'll try to do it maybe around 11-ish or 12-ish. So with that being said, uh, it's 442. I wanted to make sure that this was clear enough for you to talk about, you know, if this was a day shot, then if we got rid of that, the day shot, it would simply be, and we'll just, we'll do a day shot. Let's say, then maybe, you know, we're doing and there's still a cast shadow. I mean, we're just, gonna, our, our colors are going to be lighter, brighter. It's going to be, you know, and again, depending on what time of day it is, um, you want to maybe just loosely put in your, your colors. Actually, let me do this. And I'm just using this existing sketch that you have. 
And I'm going to find Where is that brush? I was looking for a particular brush. But you know what? I'll just use this one. So maybe you just want to do a light colors uh, when you do loose colors just sp put splashes of and this again I'm just doing this as a value tone just put splashes of color in and, and kind of let this still be the lightest light area uh, and then just do a nice little a tone maybe this bleeds out and then you leave this a little bit lighter here and because you're going down an, an alleyway that might be slightly in shadow Maybe the, the, sh the cast shadow comes down across over here. Or, actually even better, let's say the light source is coming from, a, um, from above but behind camera and it's casting, the sh maybe this, this building is casting a shadow like so. And maybe this is a lighter, a lighter tone. Oop. Let me go up here. And maybe this is a lighter tone. And this is all lighter in this area. So as he's going from the light, let's say this is all this is all lighter right here, and then it, then there, you have a shadow going down an alleyway, and then it goes to light again, so that the background. I'll just maybe make this slightly darker up here, just to kind of show. Maybe this is away from the light, and you have maybe just a slight drop shadow because the light source is coming from this direction, costing this shadow. And then so as the character is going again, the character is in the light, in the light, and then is back in the light down here. A, his shadow, let me, let me go to here. His shadow is going to be going in the same direction as the shadow of the light source in the layout. Let's say this is the character. I'm just going to put him in there so that this pops out. He's got his shadow, his shadow. He'll have a he'll have a little bit of a shadow when he's running away, like so on this side. And then when he's in there, you don't want him to be as dark as the shadow, but you know uh, you want to make sure that he definitely goes down a couple of tones when you do uh, your covering. So then, as he enters the shadow, he's now here versus like this and then when he gets back out to the back you can uh, put that cast shadow down on him again um, here as he's going away so now what you're doing is you're creating uh, depth by how your lighting is going to work with the character 
but going going in and out. And then we've created a, a tone, a look and feel. If it's like the middle of the day and he wants to run away from something, he's in the light. Him going into the shadow is, is showing like, you know, this is a particular time of day. Maybe this is sunrise or sunset, depending on, you know, which direction this building is at. But this helps create a nice contrast in your layout. It helps create a little bit more depth to it. Um, it's really simple what I just did, but it's, it's a way of showing you how you can play with your lighting depending on what time of day it is along with your, again, if it's watercolor, you're doing these light wash tones over it while still emphasizing your drawing line. You know, you want to keep that drawing line nice and loose. Just emphasize little darker areas for detail. Like, like if you want, for instance, if this is your layout and you want that line art to pop a little bit because you still want the line art to shine through. I'll just add it right here. Then maybe just make that a little bit, make, you know, make this, this section just a little bit darker. Maybe this section just a little bit darker to kind of show that this pops forward a little bit, you know? And you're still keeping a nice loose pencil line because um, you're trying to keep it like it's a, it's a watercolor paper idea and then maybe you know you just throw a little emphasis in certain areas here and there nothing too fancy maybe this and then but you know this would be maybe your your darker contrast because it's closer to you thicker lines and then maybe just add a little hint of line here to kind of pop that a little bit forward from the background and then you keep this background area just like it is. If you want to emphasize this and pop this layout forward, just add here and there just touches of line, but don't get too thick in the far ground and the background part of it. You can make it darker, overall darker than in terms of the, the line quality than this, this particular area for their background. You have a, this is a middle ground area is what you have here. And then you have your background, which is those that far uh, building in the back. And then you want to emphasize this to pop up. You just darken it up a little bit more and it pops it forward. Pops it forward like so. Anyways, hopefully this really helps. Um, that's it for, for the drawovers. I'll, I'll, I'll keep this as a, I'm going to just go ahead and put this, uh, cancel this out. I'm going to save this as a note for you. Save as note. And you just, you can look through all of this and just kind of see what I've, I've been talking about. I've got them all in here. Um, I should break it up a little bit for you so you can kind of see what's what. Um, there's different contrasts. You can get rid of this, this, where is this one? What is that one? We don't need that. We need just that one to kind of show the night shot versus the day shot. And then the two different variances of the shadow. There you go, there's that other one, night. Night cast shadow versus day shadow, all right. All right, great. That's awesome. Well, I'm I'm glad that that helped uh, Roman. So Dakota, I'm gonna go ahead and save this out again. Make sure this saves. It looks like my screensaver is saving. Quit out of that. There you go. Lights lightened up again. Um, it was a little orange because I have a screen screen for the light and dark when it gets darker out here, out in Seattle. It's starting to lighten up more, but it is it is. Uh, it used to be pitch black at this time. Now it's starting to, we're losing, uh, the days are becoming longer, which is good. Looking forward to summer again. 
Anyways, hope this helps, Dakota. I will quit out of this. And um, let me quit out of that. And let me go back to cancel that. There we go. Now, when I hang up, I'm going to go and focus on, I'm going to try to do another little pass of the dragonfly, see if I can come up with something. But I hope, again, this was a good draw over Monday for you guys, or draw over Tuesday, Monday on Tuesday. There we go. But um, yeah, I miss Wink. Wink wasn't around, but we had to switch things up. But that's all good. I hope you guys really like this. If you do like it, please come back. Uh, send me your work for next week. Um, actually, I think Anita sent me some boards that I, I kind of might want to tackle for next week or next Monday. Uh, we have a Discord, lots of Discord challenges that Anita's been doing. And what's really nice about that is that you guys are actually doing them. Um, and it's really cool to see you guys really pushing yourselves in terms of story. And I'm really ho hoping that all of these uh, extra uh, challenges are really helpful for you guys, especially when you, if you don't have anything to do, go to our Discord and do some of the exercises that we have. And again, uh, what I'm going to be doing uh, coming up soon is I'm going to be doing a story uh, demo uh, that'll be a live event. It'll be paid. Um, we haven't figured out the price for the event yet, but you guys, anyone that wants to join can buy, pay, the, pay for the event. It'll be exclusive for you guys. Uh, you'll get to ask me questions, kind of what we're doing now. And also you'll get to walk away with the, uh, the, the copy of that uh, workshop session. So, um, and then we got another one that's hopefully going to be happening with Aaron at Creature Art Teacher. We're going to be doing another event with him. And I'm hoping that we'll get a lot of people in there. And that one, what I pitched to Aaron was going to be a story development workshop, which is we have one day to do the Ken Adams Story Spine, develop a story, and then get it to eight, eight beat boards, visual beat boards, uh, along with a loose character design that we will do a crash course in and I will do it with you and we'll do it as a demo and we'll go through the steps stage by stage uh, so that you guys can have that as well and that hopefully um, if all goes well I haven't figured out a time yet because it's all up to Aaron and, and Nick on their end when they would like to do it with me um, but yeah looking forward to a lot of new stuff in the new year so thank you again Brush Mechanic and uh, the challenges oh uh, Trajan Trajan says the challenges help a lot and are really inspiring. Your pal Druby uh, at New People. Travis YouTube account has previously has previous streams plus a lot more. Yes, they do. I need to update some of those. I've got some streams that I'm missing that I got to put up there. And then um, HG says, please check out your, wisp your whisper I sent you as soon as possible. Your whisper HD, what is that? Please check out your whisper I sent you as soon as possible. Okay. I don't know what that is, but I'll check it out. Um, oh, check your whisper I sent you. Okay. It's a message on Twitch. <laughs> message on Twitch. I don't know what any of these things are. Whisper. You're whispering to me. Okay. With that being said, have a great day, guys. This was fun. I was able to do this with relatively painlessly without any too much. I don't think there were too many technical difficulties, but all is good. All is good. Uh, oh yeah, Brush Mechanic says, Peter Steve, Schoolism has a wonderful lighting stuff. Yes, go check out Schoolism. There are so many good people out there. Of course, you know you know me because I'm, I'm constantly asking and, or answering a lot of questions and jumping from here to here. Um, a lot of these things that need a lot more dedication, specifically like lighting. Um, there are a lot of really, really good lighting people out there. Schoolism has it, Proku has it, Aaron has them. Um, again, go over there. You're always going to find me. I'm going to give you good direction in terms of uh, what you need to do and how you need to approach it. If you want more finite, in, you know, detailed information on how to approach some of these specifics, go to these places. Um, we're going to be focusing a lot on story, storyboarding, uh, story emphasis on character design. Uh, in the coming months, we're going to be doing our, again, like I said, we are launching our tutorials this year. So, and though everything will have a very strong story based theme and we're going to have a really cool t-shirt design I did. I think you guys are going to like. So, um, even if you don't know who Sketch the Anime is and you like Octopus, I think you're going to like this design. So, talk to you later. 
I'm heading out. I'm gonna do my intro outro. Where are you, OBS? There you are. Got it. All right. I will talk to you guys later and see ya.